super complex statement very simply. Uh, we're trying to train engineering superheroes, right? Because we're trying to train an engineer that can do everything. So the big question is, how are we doing, right? When you think back over the last decade or so. And the best example I can come up with is actually something that happened a year ago. So a group of Grand Challenge Scholar alums, a uh, couple of whom are here with us today, uh, teamed up with the NAE, the you know, more senior NAE members who are also here today, uh, to create the COVID-19 call to action. And I see some smiles in the back of the room. And as a member of the executive committee, I had the uh, amazing experience of being able to watch these incredibly optimistic, enthusiastic, uh, energetic um, engineers who, you know, against all odds, managed to kick off this you know, international engineering consortium really designed to tackle this global pandemic. And it was the training they got as an undergrad in how to identify problems, solve problems, build a consortium, and work with stakeholders like the NAE and the government that really trained them on how to do this type of effort. So that is the family that the scholars that we're you know, recognizing today, that's the family you're joining, right? You're joining this established family, and you should definitely talk to the few in the back who've been successful. So you're joining this great family of young, enthusiastic, thriving engineers. And I hope that everybody in the audience enjoys hearing a few snippets of the stories that our current engineers did during their undergrad degree. And with that, I'm gonna introduce uh, Dr. Eric Johnson, Professor of Civil Engineering and the Vice Dean of Academic Programs at USC. I'm only going to say a few words because we want to focus today mostly on what our students are doing. The grand challenges and the mindsets that go around it infuse everything that we try to do from attracting students all the way through graduation. Uh, the focus on big picture societal problems is one of the key ingredients in bringing some of the outstanding students that we have here today. We have a big focus in our first year freshman engineering freshman academy course where we have students do projects related to one of the grand challenges, and it's something to help them think about the big picture as they are also taking some of the courses in math and physics and chemistry and so forth, that sometimes students tend to start losing a little bit of interest because they're taking just these other courses and not focusing on the problems that they're gonna be able to solve. Uh, also, we have a, a, a new minor that was just approved about a week and a half ago that's very closely connected to the grand challenges. This minor is called the Engineering Innovation for Global Challenges. And it's a new minor to try to in, uh, engage students in thinking again about these global problems and focus them around both solutions and, as Dr. Armani mentioned, some of the broader uh, impacts, some positive, some negative, of the things that we engineers do. Uh, also want to mention we also have recently recast uh, one of our programs uh, that was previously focused on, on, right, on communication and a little bit on ethics and have renamed it the Engineering and Society program to really emphasize the fact that we want our students not only to be fantastic engineers with technical expertise, but also to be able to understand the broader impacts of the work that they do. So with that, I I'm going to pass the microphone to Dr. Naj Mishkadi, who is a professor uh, with joint appointments in civil engineering and industrial systems engineering. He is the director of our Grand Challenge Scholars Program here at USC. Dr. Mishkadi. Thank you, Eric. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Naj Mishkati. I've been asked to introduce a wonderful speaker, uh, calling Professor Armani, but I would uh, remiss if uh, I don't acknowledge the presence of some uh, distinguished people here, and I want to go off the script a little bit. Uh, I hope I wouldn't gaff on that, but uh, it's really a, a Grand Challenge Scholars Program has had a remarkable trajectory in the last uh, uh, at least uh, 12 years that I have been following that. I think uh, I would like to show you, as part of my off uh, script, uh, the presentation, the T 
T-shirt that was good and I did that for the second. Dr. Garnes, you also says as one of the uh, three people that organized this event, I see Dr. Rick Miller and Tom Katsalius. This is the this is the critical mass of the Grand Challenge Scholars Program here. And Dean Carpenter, welcome also to us. And then I have the original booklet of that that was given to us and the Grand Challenges. It's really a remarkable trajectory. 97 schools are all part of this program. This is, if you look at the curve that the yours has put, this is really, you need to admire the exponential and hug that exponential of the growth that we have had in the last, that we have had, the Grand Challenges Scholars Program of the National Academy, Dr. Anderson, thanks to your leadership, your uh, predecessor leadership, the late Chuck Press, and uh, Dr. Moore, and also my colleague here, Professor Ramakrishna here, that who was a fellow Jefferson Science fellow with me. And I had the great pleasure of introducing five uh, uh, speakers to you. These fives are representative sample of the 32 fantastic uh, Grand Challenges Scholars Program designees. Each one of these 32 or these five, they could talk about their five mindsets or their five competencies. But since we don't have time and you're all invited to dinner and President Ford is hosting that, we cut them short. We ask each one of these five speakers to talk about one competency that uh, uh, they uh, did for their uh, project. And uh, we have also one speaker in addition to that, one of the five of that five competency that she's going to be talking about her experience with the student organization that we have, which is called uh, Student Innovating for Grand Challenges. Uh, these are five remarkable ladies and gentlemen. One of them, I told him that as you will see, he has the second <laughs> nicest haircut in the room, as you will see later. But uh, uh, I will, uh, would not take more time over here, but I say that this has been a great pleasure and honor for me to work with our remarkable student, staff, and colleague, the Yorses, Professor Armani, <coughs> Professor Eric Johnson, Ms. Nora Sandoval, and others. I would like to ask the first presenter, uh, Ms. Lena Bagur, to come, and I hope that you can figure out how to handle this uh, machine here, which has been <laughs> nice to me all this. <laughs> Hi, my name is Lena. I'm a senior completing majors in computer science, cognitive science, and linguistics. Today I'll be speaking briefly about the competency of talent and research, which is instilled in every participant in the Grand Challenge Scholars Program. I entered the Turby as a freshman, pretty wide-eyed, interested broadly in artificial intelligence and applications of AI for human health and well-being. I'm incredibly fortunate that I was able to explore these interests very rapidly within the, the first couple weeks of freshman year. I joined USC's Interaction Lab in the Robotics and Autonomous Systems Center, and I began conducting research on robots for social good. In the past four years in the Interaction Lab, I've been able to conduct research on robots that help uh, children with autism spectrum disorder, and I've also co-led an NSF study advancing robot perception of human empathy and human-machine interactions. Viterbi has amazing opportunities for undergraduates. Uh, through the research track of Viterbi's Honors Program, which is run by Professor Armani, I was able to pursue and complete an independent senior thesis, which advanced AI approaches for, human, for social intelligence in machines for applications in mental health care and human-machine interactions. Beyond the phenomenal opportunities in labs, there's a very vibrant research community among undergrads in Viterbi student organizations. For the past three years, I've had the opportunity to co-lead a research collaboration between undergrads in USC's Center for AI and Society and the Linguistics Department. We contributed the first machine learning and signal processing approaches for preserving endangered languages, and it was 
truly fulfilling to work on AI research for social good, in this case, preserving real, real communities, linguistic and cultural well-being. My Viterbi professors and the GCSB program have encouraged me to develop a global and cross-institutional perspective on research during my time here. In summer 2019, I was a research fellow at EPFL in Switzerland, where I had a chance to work on computer vision and machine learning approaches to help uh, Red Cross societies in 28 different European countries reunite families that were separated during Europe's refugee crisis that summer. In summer 2021, I was a bit closer to home. I spent that summer at Caltech, and I worked on machine learning research that had applications in healthcare, especially a cross-cultural context in mental health. My work so far as an undergraduate has resulted in seven papers, six of them as the lead author in an ACM Best Paper nomination, and all of these outcomes are truly a reflection of the amount of investment that Viterbi faculty have put into mentoring undergrads and truly investing in them as scientists and engineers, and the GCSP program's encouragement of undergraduate research. Um, I'll be graduating soon and pursuing my PhD at Carnegie Mellon University School of Computer Science, supported by an NSF Graduate Research Fellowship. I'm incredibly grateful to the GCSP program. It's been invaluable in preparing me for an engineering research career. Um, I'm going to miss USC, um, but I feel prepared for pursuing this career. I'm incredibly inspired by my professors here, and I hope in the long term to become a professor and to work on advancing core aspects of AI and AI for human health and well-being. Thank you. couple of different competencies. Here we are. So during my time at Viterbi, I've studied chemical engineering and I'm also pursuing a Master of Public Health through the Progressive Degree Program. The grand challenge that I've focused on is developing carbon sequestration methods. And today I'll be talking to you about my experiences in the GCSP, in particular um, how my experiences in the multidisciplinary and multicultural competencies have shaped me and informed my perspectives on engineering. Before I begin, I'd like to dedicate this speech to my mentor, Dr. Najma Shkai. <laughs> so thank you so much for that. And thank you um, for um, encouraging me to push the boundaries of what a 21st century engineer can be. So, to begin, I'm going to talk about my multidisciplinary competencies, and I want to emphasize the importance of multidisciplinary studies as an engineer. One of the factors that attracted me to USC's engineering program was an emphasis on engineering plus, the idea that you're an engineer, and so much more. When I noticed that the GCSP also valued these multidisciplinary emphases in engineering education, I took this opportunity to push the boundaries of what Engineering Plus could be, and I challenged myself to learn as much as possible within my eight semesters here. And throughout my time, I've had the great fortune of taking classes across a variety of USC's professional schools, including the Gold School of Law, Keck School of Medicine, and Kaufman School of Dance, just to name a few. Through these experiences, I've learned diverse skill sets such as GIS, life cycle assessments, financial analyses, environmental justice advocacy, human rights evaluations, nonprofit management, and improvisational theater. Now, you may be wondering, what does improv have to do with engineering? And for me, it reflects the social, cultural, and intercommunication pillars in our society, and it reminds me that the modern engineer must be technically savvy and able to effectively communicate their work to truly make an impact. Through my diverse learning experiences, I've evolved not only depth of knowledge in individual subjects, but more importantly, breadth of knowledge across a variety of disciplines. This experience has revealed to me the different levels of understanding and has helped me set intentions with my learning, especially now that most of my learning is transitioning to experiential and out of the classroom. Now, I recognize that when I learn a new functional disciplinary skill, such as systems thinking, which many of us in the room are familiar with, 
It could be a very one-dimensional and static framework if not further developed. It's a skill you can look up in a textbook if you forget to apply it for a specific limited situation. However, the next level beyond that is the active application of knowledge across situations, which comes from repeated exposure and engagement with the skill in related contexts. For me, this was applying systems thinking to a variety of engineering applications, from chemical engineering problems to root cause analyses, both in my coursework and in my research. Some people like to call this T-shaped expertise. The next level of understanding is where we as engineers should strive to be. I've heard this called M-shaped expertise, but in essence, this is the nexus of knowledge and understanding, where you are able to apply your skills across disciplines and sectors. For me, this is where I apply my systems thinking to recognize how the carbon sequestration grant challenge fits within the context of the broader world we live in. My multidisciplinary studies gave me insight into the many factors that will influence the success of the goal. Not only do carbon sequestration technologies need to be perfected, but they must be scalable, ethically deployed, and provide the impact intended by this important technology. And my studies also helped me explore the human side of this grand challenge by prompting reflective questions such as, what role should emissions reduction technologies play in our achievement of climate goals? What environmental and safety risks are associated with this sector and this technology? And how is human health impacted by these industrial facilities? As engineers, we are uniquely trained to manage systems and complex problems. Through our technical training, we are able to zoom in and break down problems into smaller systems and devise specialized solutions on a micro-scale system. However, as engineers, our work and our innovations do not exist in a vacuum. Please do not forget this. We exist within a broad society that has diverse needs and constraints that must be considered when designing a solution. And to do this, we have to remember to zoom out and recognize the macro systems that govern our world, such as communications, social values, economics, energy, and law. Just to name a few. And to embrace multidisciplinary knowledge is to embrace a growth mindset and recognize that to best serve in our roles as engineers in an ever-changing world, we must always continue to learn about the world around us and the people in it. That brings me to the next part of my presentation, which focuses on my experiences with the multicultural competency. My experiences in this competency have been instrumental in me finding my place in my community and in the world. And I'd like to begin with multicultural engagement on a local level. So if you look at the picture on the far right under the house icon, um, this is a form of my social engagement. And I want to start by saying we're so fortunate here to have studied in one of America's most socially and culturally diverse cities. Los Angeles is a microcosm of the challenges faced by governments around the world. And for me, I found my niche in community organizing and engaging with my local neighborhood to advocate to end oil drilling. And that's the photo shown here, some children advocating outside of a site that's about a mile and a half down the street from here. So, um, yeah, I could talk about that all day if you want to ask afterwards. <laughs> but I want to focus on some of my big takeaways from my engagement with my local community. Firstly, I found out what it means to be a good neighbor. Coming from Dallas, Texas, I never associated with a community-driven culture, so this was an enriching experience in itself. I found out about the lived experiences, trauma, and challenges associated with living next to an oil drilling site. and. Another cult interesting cultural experience came about when um, meeting non-English speakers. As a native Spanish speaker, I was confronted by new Spanish dialects and colloquialisms unique to the individuals with whom I spoke. And for non-English and non-Spanish speakers, it served as a reminder to myself to strive to make my work as inclusive and accessible as possible. Although the residents in the area come from all ethnic backgrounds and income levels, they all share the cultural fabric of being impacted by the drilling site. This experience with microculture on such a small scale has conditioned me to seek out social systems, even on the smallest neighborhood levels. Now, I'd like to zoom out a lot and to a global level to reflect on one of my favorite USC classes and experiences ever. So, Last year, I registered for a class known by the Turvey students as Icodia. For 14 weeks, I met with students and faculty from around the world and learned about the principles of global innovation. 
Never had I learned as quickly and with such enthusiasm as when I learned with the network of global engineering students. I can make a laundry list of the things I learned from my peers, but what I found most encouraging was the resilience of young students from around the world engaging with each other virtually in a global environment that seemed severed by COVID and exchanging not only ideas and inspirations, but also cultural norms and values. I've had the great fortune of taking a couple of classes in this international style and, um, and in meeting people around the world, it makes me reflect that we're just that, we're all just people, human beings trying to make it in an ever-changing world. And it gives me a sense of global neighborliness and reminded me that innovation, both its benefits and its consequences, are not governed by international boundaries. As the world experiences increasing burdens from climate change and other social stressors, we must remember that we are all part of a broader local community, just as much as we are part of our local communities. Now, finally on my last slide. <laughs> Today's engineers require more than just technical skills. We need to understand and consider the interests of the communities affected by our engineering practice. We need a strong knowledge of ethical responsibilities in view of the rapid and powerful changes in technology that we see today. We need, to, we need a deep understanding of ourselves and our place in our society, and we must be able to articulate their ideas, these ideas, to ensure that they have impact. The GCSP program has helped me develop these traits and mindsets to make a positive impact in my engineering work. This summer, I will combine my GCSB competencies to work with an environmental litigation um, group in pursuit of human rights-based environmental justice in Latin America. In the fall, I will be continuing my Master of Public Health degree here at USC to advance on my long-term goals of developing industrial regulatory policy. Got a couple of degrees to go. <laughs> The GCSP program has given me the tools I need to make a conscious impact on the world. And it makes me incredibly hopeful to see a room full of engineers who have also completed this fantastic program. And with this, I wish everyone the best in their future endeavors. Thank you.
These experiences have given me a new mindset coming out of USC that shifts away from our traditional mindset in engineering of problem solving, but focuses more on the mindset of problem exploration. I've learned that as a computer science major, I shouldn't just fall in love with a specific technological solution and just think that I can apply it to a problem and it will solve the problem. But that I should really fall in love with the problem, really try to understand from the people who are experiencing that problem, and work together with them to generate a solution that will be more successful in the long run. Overall, um, this Grand Challenge College program has given me the opportunity to go beyond my technical education and really get a bigger picture view of the world outside of my own discipline, which has made me a better engineer overall. So I'm really grateful to have been part of this program. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Sage Clark. Uh, I'm also graduating, obviously, uh, studying mechanical engineering. Um, it's an honor, by the way, to just be able to speak up here and talk about my experience and how uh, you know GCSP has shaped me as an engineering student and how it's going to move moving forward. Uh, Dean Nostros, uh, probably a month ago, spoke to us and talked about this misconception that society has about the disconnect between social impact and engineering. And that there's like one or the other. You either choose to get into liberal arts or you get into the sciences. And I would agree with you know the dean's uh, uh, interpretation that it's absolutely incorrect. After being GCSP, I'm actually completely convinced it's the opposite. Uh, I don't think there's anything else better that you can get into if you really want to impact the world. Uh, that's my objective opinion. I'm a little biased. Um, but it is. Um, I see my life as a servant for humanity. Um, I've, you know, in this picture, this was taken about, uh, you know, five years ago now, where I, uh, six months after I meeting my now wife, uh, graduated here as well. Um, and to be honest, she's the one who exposed me to the possibility of even going here. If you were to tell me I was be here five years ago, absolutely not. Uh, I barely graduated high school. I dropped out of three colleges. Uh, at that point is when I realized I needed to do something. Uh, I joined the Marine Corps. And uh, things you could say turned around. Uh, you know, since since being uh, and I've been able to, I've been participating in a few different programs. Uh, one called uh, the Youth Mentor Program, or Youth Mentorship Program, and then uh, the Next Step Inbound, where I've been able to take the experiences that I've got from, uh, you know, just the arduous process of getting into school, um, and help kids from underserved communities around the area, and also fellow veterans. I also serve specifically as uh, VITA, uh, it's a program run by the LA Sheriff's Department, uh, basically dealing with children who have you know, troubled children. Instead of doing juvenile detention processes, these kids go through a program where we go through kind of a behavioral rehabilitation, you might say. And as it might, it started as me using my role as a Marine, it's actually more taken, my role as an engineer has taken more influence in kids moving forward. Being able to sell some of the cool things that we do as engineers, like things like being able to, you know, send medications to rural areas, being able to possibly print homes, doing things such as, you know, providing a low, uh, uh, low latency, high speed broadband service to the entire world, or even being able to actually, with the James W. Uh, James Webb Space Telescope, being able to actually see the birthing of our universe. The fact that these things, are, these, these weren't things I really thought about before as I lived in a world where I just got to take advantage of this, you know, the benefits of engineers. I want to reinvigorate our society and let them know that if, in the reality of what we want to do, if we want to move forward and change the world and shape and actually solve the problems we want to do, we're going to have to have engineers to do it. And that's what I look forward in pushing and moving forward. Thank you. Everyone. My name is Radhika Bakori, and I am a senior studying electrical and computer engineering. Um, I feel so honored and privileged to be here today. Um, I've been a part of the GCSP program since 2020, and the competency that I've been working towards is the Advancing Health Informatics uh, competency, and especially in the context of the NAE's COVID-19 call for action. 
And so my peers have done an incredible job highlighting the five competencies. And now to conclude, I want to take a moment to share a little bit about GCSP leadership. And I believe that leadership uh, in GCSP kind of links these five competencies together. So during our virtual semester in fall 2020, two GCSP students um, that are here with us today, Neha and Samantha, um, with the help of Myra, they founded SIGSI, which is the Students Innovating for Global Challenges that acts as the student branch for GCSP. I served as the director of programming for the club that oversaw um, the leaders for the different committees, and I worked with Myra and both the presidents to organize GCSP events. And what's really exciting is last semester we launched the student mentorship program that aims to pair younger students um, with upperclassmen that are pursuing similar GCSP challenges. So how I got involved in 6C is actually um, the semester prior to this where I was nominated um, by Professor Mishkadi and Myra to represent Viterbi at the GCSP Student Leader Conference. It was one of the first held. Um, and there was over 40 schools represented across the nation, and the summit spanned over three days to connect GCSB student leaders and conceptualize ways to build and grow the chapters at our respective institutions and the overall GCSB community. And so engaging in insightful and meaningful discussions with other student leaders sparked some ideas to grow our own GCSB chapter at USC. So this would involve some of these ideas already in place, and we've been talking with Professor Mishkadi and Myra and Sixi to make these happen at some point. So one of the ideas is to create a GCSP research fellowship for students here, and also have an annual symposium where GCSP students can come and present their research and get to know what other students are doing in the program, as well as creating some sort of one to two unit course or Friday colloquium for guest speakers and professors to speak at um, kind of mirroring the Viterbi Honors Program Colloquium, and also host regional meetups. USC's GCSB program continues to bloom and evolve, and I'm so grateful to have met such caring and supportive mentors like Professor Mishkadi and students in our GCSB cohort that continue to inspire me. So thank you so much. So thank you uh, to all of our students. You were all amazing. I, I know you practiced. Uh, I, I, I'm saying that, um, and I'd like to highlight one thing. We're in the middle of finals right now. Yeah. So I, I think it's important for everybody here to, to know that. We're, we're in the middle of finals, and these five students found time to write slides, practice slides, practice multiple times, um, and they did an amazing job. So that's it. So if all the students who are being recognized could start to meander over to this direction in a second. And it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. John Anderson, the president of the National Academy of Engineering, who is going to come with me along with Dean Yortsos. Yes, yes. And I, I feel, I feel kind of like I'm hurting cats to a certain extent. Over this direction. Okay, great. I'm going to let them coordinate for a second. Okay, so um, undergraduates, you're going to filter this way. We're going to start with Lena. Excellent. Everybody line up behind Lena. I'm, I'm going to create one.
Lena Matures. Christopher Liu. 